Welcome to Meaningful Interviews, part number two with Rabbi Mayor Plotkin. We had a fascinating interview so far, talking about his background, his childhood, his parents, and now we're up to the point where we're discussing him leaving Montreal in the end of 1956, going to Tarav Das, and beginning his learning at that yeshiva. Rabbi Mayor, please continue. Okay. So I just turned I just turned fourteen. At, at that time, it, 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 I learned the last year with, when I was by mitzvah. I learned by you know, a, a lit yeshiva, which it, it's not even to go. It was nothing special. Uh, and then, but I, I, in Montreal at that time had a zal a bismedish in yeshiva. The yeshiva was an old building, a, a big house. Uh, in the, in the, where we lived, not where, where it's today. And uh, we would go to the yeshiva and on, let's say on Shabbos, uh, we would go and we, we, and we, we became friends. I was small kids and we, and we became friends with the Bochum over there. So not to go into, get, get, go astray, I'm gonna concentrate really on one Bochum because he had more direct shaykhit than than other than over there. Uh, listeners are listening. You have to realize I was a boy. I, I was a boy. I, I just turned 14. I turned 14. I tell you, I, I was really 13. I, I was 13 years old. Okay. Maybe I was even 12. Let's say I was 13. Okay. And uh, I give an example. What, I, I, I mentioned some Bokhrim. Oh, a Bokhrim. Okay. But they're six, seven, eight years older than me. And even when I came to learn in yeshiva, I was the youngest one, nobody younger than me. It, learning the hours that I put in, but that goes no, for so later. So Pinya Korf, before, Pinya before, Korf before, who became a mashpi, a big wait, famous mashpi. Wait, 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 Rabbi Plotkin, it may, one second. Why did you go to Montreal? Was it your decision? Was it your desire or your parents? My parents had no, were not interested in anything. My parents were interested in one thing. In one thing, and that has to do with a whole interview. Okay, I should be another chayid for the rest of my life, and do whatever you want. My mother, my mother, my parents never said one word when I became a Lubavitcher. Not what that's no, 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 no. But one I'm word. Saying, so what made you they were just interested? I should remain a from a yid. Okay, so what made so was it your decision? You want to go to Taravadas? No, a yes and no. I went somewhere else before Torah Badas. That's why I started telling you. There was El Tura Bokhram, five, six, seven, eight years older than me. Those who are listening today, in 2000, the day, the day today, unfortunately, they passed away in the last year or two. So I mentioned two of them that were uh, big names in, uh, in uh, Crown Heights, okay? And they were st students in the yeshiva, okay? One of them became the Rav Crown Heights in his name. We called them Yankov. That's what we called them. I never called them Yaakov. His name is Aaron Yaakov. I never called him that. By me, he was Yankov Shrey. The rest of my, that's what he was. And Pinchas Korf was Pinya. And there were Bochum in, in the Zal. The that's Zal what mean, the Zal looked like in that time. The, the Zal became. You the Zal where? The Zal in Montreal? In, in Montreal, in Montreal, the Barbara Shiv in Montreal, the 90, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. Yeah, but wait, but wait, but Those wait years were in Montreal. I, th I thought at the age of 14, you went to Terra Vidas in Brooklyn. Yeah, so wait, I didn't get there yet. I didn't get there yet. You talked about both, before. While yeah, you were in yeah, Montreal, in I the literature. In the literature, what I, what, I, what I want to drive at that there was one Bocher, and Bocher Shem is alive today, and I'm going to give the whole credit to him because he deserves the whole credit. And I tell them, I tell my children today, you know, I meet a Zainakrach and this and that. I even became a Shtikh of with his family. That's not the gay. I said it was one Bocher. If not for him, I wouldn't end up in the Babich. And his name is Sholemberg Gukov. Sholemberg Gukov got into a system that three Bokhram have to end up in Lubavitch. And he worked on it. And we became very close to him. In ages, 
Oh, oh, oh. oh, I'll tell you how old he is. I'll tell you, I know he is. He's seven years older than me, approximately. Good enough. So if I was uh, 13, so he was 20. Like he got married a few years later. Okay, he was 20. Let's say he was 20. So I'm out okay, for okay, years. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, and he worked on it. And he had a bigger spur on us. We looked up to this book. We didn't understand this book. Because we came from a different world. They were gazettes, the Bakram, and we were vast to the kids. The chinuk that they gave us was a vast to the kids. They did not know better. I don't, I don't know. Wait a minute. Just, one second. Just give me a second. I, I, I don't didn't understand. get the title. No, no, I no. didn't get the title of Adas. No, I know I that. Wait. I went to Tom Chetmeim and before Tor of Adas. I know that. But wait a minute. I don't understand how you got from being in the literacy yeshiva to, to going to type to teach these bachar. You didn't tell us how. What made okay. you do that? What made you do that? What made me do with it? Okay. I'll tell you what made me do with it. I was a young kid. I didn't understand literacy yeshivas and everything. Okay. But when you have the Rosh Yeshiva, and I was a kid and I looked at these things. And I had, and, and I had, and there was Rosh Hashiv, and he ran the whole Yeshiva, and I see the Shmona Esra, and the whole Shmona Esra is picking his nose. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh. And I knew something is wrong. I didn't know what. I'll give you two examples. Not the shame Lash Nahara. I was a kid. What do you want? I was a small kid. I didn't understand better. Where should I understand better? And they would, and, 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 and this person wrote a safer, and he was one of the top Mira Tamidim. And he has a skumba for Chaim Shmulevitz. And his Yiddish guy, first of all, the woman, the, all the, the hair was uncovered. No tichel, no shaito, nothing. Okay. And the year Shemayim, I'll just tell how it looked. I'm not going to go into everything. I'm not saying, well, Hashem, Hashem, but you want to know what pushed me off? I'll tell you what pushed me off. Okay. And I'm a kid of, of 13. I was 13 years old then. I was by mitzvah then. Yeah. And one of the one of the faculty, I don't want to go into him, it's a different story altogether. Whereas it was Harab Pinchas Hirschbrum. He was in the Litvishi Yeshiva. He had no connection with Chabad. You'll see later, I brought him to Chabad, nobody else. But that's not the game now. So he calls me over once he says, Mary Kir, come ahead. So I go over to him and he gives me an envelope. Okay. And he says, that this rabbi, I don't want to mention him because it's English and harder. He has to sign this piece of paper or give it to him. I don't remember what. And he was, it was a two or three minute walk, the same street just to walk up, you know, like a block or two. So I did it. So I ring the bell and his wife answers. I've seen her before. Of course, the hair wasn't covered. And, but, uh, and I knew you're supposed to cover her hair, but I'm not going to go into all that. And, uh, and I told her that I have to, she said, okay, so go, go in over there. He, had, he, he didn't come to Shiva, he had a, a flu or something. I walk into a room, and this is a senior Rosh Shiva. And he's sitting, he's sitting with, with, a, with a shirt, with an undershirt. I don't think he was wearing scissors. I don't remember. That guy, I don't know. With his underwear. And he had a little box on him with a gemara open. And the television on. I was a kid of 13 years old and I saw that. And I, I, was, I was amazed from the greatness of these great people. Because Rabbi Dolphin wants to know, wait a minute, you were by the literature. Weren't you influenced by them? Yes, I was influenced by them. Now, when this guy, when this guy, Scholenberg Gukov, okay, that he took an interest with us and he would sit with Shabbos and he would forbear with us and tell us stories how they lived in Russia, how it was hard, how when he was 13 years old, how they lived over there. With, I don't remember all the things. And we came close to him. We liked him. And then he talked to three of us that we should go learn in Yeshiva. Who are the three? Who are the three? Yourself? Yeah. Oh, come and go big Sunny Rosenblum. There is a Mishpacha today, Rosenblum. That are in Chabad. That's for that, for that family. Okay. I don't want to go into it. The whole Rosenblum family became Lubavitch. But then they weren't Lubavitch. Their, their father was not Lubavitch from 100%. They were, it was the same as family like my family. They were, but that's a different story altogether. So he talked us into going to Pittsburgh. 
And you know what happened? We went. I told my parents, I'm going to learn in Pittsburgh. Gay is in the hate. They didn't care where I went. Right. Now, I, 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 to I still, go to Israel. As long okay, as I, have, I went to Shiva to learn Torah. Yes. I still have a question that I didn't get an answer to. How did you meet Sholem Ber Gurkov? How did you meet him? How did you know about him? I knew all the Bochum. We used to go to the dish and we used to play around. And we met him. Not all the Bochum came out till we were small kids. He took an interest in us. He okay. came to us. We didn't go to him. We came to play. The Shiva had a big, big, big yard. We went came to play with small kids. I was 12, okay. 13. Okay. I was 12 years old on Yom already. Okay. And he you would didn't... call us in and tell us, tell us it was Shabbos. The Shabbos, you can't do everything. You can't even limit what you could do in Shabbos, yeah? And Shabbos is no school. So we'd right. come down with weather, we would play. He would call us in and tell us stories and for being with us and became Hagish with us. And we liked him and we looked up to him. We were from kids. You didn't have to make us from. Okay, you know? so you uh, so you went, Paul, you went to Pittsburgh in what year? In, nine, in, the, in the end of 56. You stay, school starts in September. Yeah, that's when the school year starts. September 56. And we lasted there for two weeks. <laughs> why? Yeah, long time. Why? I'll tell you why. First of all, we were kids. Second of all, we didn't have any background whatsoever, really what a yeshiva is supposed to be. And, we, and, and yeshivas didn't have really the proper ashpa on us, you know, because that's how it was, you know. That, that, that it was with everybody. Okay. It, it, okay, well, just let me finish. Just that's all. So we went there. The Rosh Yeshiva, I mean, the one who taught to us Gemara there, the whole Yeshiva was maybe 20, 20 Talmudim. And it was also in a house. True, the house was a little bit better than Montreal. And, uh, and the Rosh Yeshiva, his name was Harav Zalm Shimon Dworkin, who eventually became the Rov in Crown Heights who learned in Lubavitch by the Rishab yet. And, uh, and he liked me more than the other two. The other two are not learners. Okay, one of them is a child of mine. Unfortunately, he passed away young. And the other one is alive and well in you know, Lubavitch. But also, he, he wasn't a learner. I was a learner. The other two weren't learners. And he wanted very much I should stay. I became close to him. And the fact was, I remained close to him for the rest of his life. I, he always liked me years later, but that's really I'm not talking about okay, now. Okay. And we lasted there for two weeks, and then we started we're leaving, we're leaving Pittsburgh. Why? We wanted to go to our yeshiva. That's a yeshiva, a building. Get away from the Montreal atmosphere. We wanted to go to a big yeshiva, a proper yeshiva. Right. Not a house. Not you're going to eat here, eat there. But that's already a continuation from Montreal. The stuff right. was good. I didn't understand and I didn't appreciate it. I was a young kid. What do you want from me? First time I left Montreal, we left. But I didn't leave Schoenberg Gokov. He didn't leave me. And I went to Turn with us. The three of us went. And there we got our, 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 our that's what we were dreaming of. Here we came to Turn with us and they had a dormitory. Yeah, a four story self contained building, 23 rooms in each floor. We'll soon talk about the dormitory in Lubavitch, okay? From kindergarten, and they had maybe four or five, six buildings in Wittenberg. They had one in Speed Valley, too. A really organized, big, the biggest, it was the biggest yeshiva in North America. And there we, I learned. And I was happy there. Because I was, I was happy there because this, it, it was run properly. There was a proper English department. The principal was without a beard, a German Jew, from, oh, was he from? He taught us the last class. We were ready first year high school or something. He taught us the last class in the winter. And every student in my, what do you teach? I think math. Every student has to come with a hat. Because when we finish learning, which is about 5 30, 6 o'clock in the winter, we're dabbling my you all and with a hat. If you don't bring a hat, you're going to, I don't know, you're going to get a class or something. And had, I like that. And he was the English principal. 
from, oh, was he from? What other beer? Okay, because Germans didn't have beers, but from. And I, I was happy the first year. I was happy I came. And the first year Taka that I learned properly, I had a good Rebbe and I was happy there. I liked it there. So I came to Torvadas, I was happy. And I learned there and there's so happy. The other guys, I don't think they lasted even three years. They weren't learners. I don't know. I think I don't know what happened to them. But they they were not the yeshiva. So when I'm going to talk, oh, friends, we, really, we, we remain. But two, two friends also, I mean, I became older, so I became yeshiva book. So there was a certain degree they were on the sidelines a little bit. Okay. But you I stop, went to Tarvadas. Stop Why? for a because moment. Stop. I found the yeshiva. I understand. The stop. Okay. Let, let, me, let me ask a question. You mentioned that you, uh, uh, Shalomber Gurkov, Kept up with you even when you were in Tara What yes. do you mean? What do you mean? Okay. When we have to go to New York in those years, I'll keep it down, but don't forget, don't forget, I was a 14-year-old Bokker. Okay, 14. Yeah. So you know, Bokker from Montreal. Let's say you just kiss if you chat. So they would come to Mon to New York. Then the only way to get to Montreal then was with a train. So we took the train at night and we came into Grand Central Station, New York in the morning. Yeah. He would call up my mother and tell Mr. Totti to put some rabbi or be hot up. If you have something to send to America, give it to me. I want, I'm going to go see her. So what's my mother going to send me? Well, what do I need? Yeah. Money I had, maybe something money, but money I know was no problem. Uh, so she baked a cake. I used to love her banana cake. She baked the cake and she sent it with him. Sean Nikov didn't go to 770. And he was a Chosh of a Bocher. Don't think he was, he was a Balchuve. His Zaid, he had two Zaidis. Two Zaidis. Yeah, everybody has two Zaidis. They both learned in Lubavitch. He had a Zaid that the shop said he's a Bain Nifantania on one of the Zaidis. Okay, so he wasn't, he didn't come down the chimney. Yeah, he would come to the train station to tell me that to give me that and that speak to me and I ask me and he was in contact with me the whole time with all of us. They had a, a big, big ashbandi. And he kept that, it had ashbandi. What kind of ashbar did it have? It had a ashbar that the marshal. So when we go now, that was one, he, he had more ashbar me than anybody else. When I came to the Shiva in Montreal, that's later. But in those years, he was the only one who had a spot on us. And he kept up, he kept up on us. Especially wait, a minute, kept... wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you, you also met Shmuel Lu and Moshe Feller oh, in Montreal. Okay. No, in Yeshiva. No, 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 no. Shmuel Lu, Arshad Zaynagol, Moshe Feller learned the Torah with us. Right. You they met learned them. The Torah with yes, so you met and them. I became close with them. One reason I became a little marshal. Oh, now we're going to something else. When I was in Torvedas, I had a shaykhis with Chabad too. Okay. The two years I was in Torvedas, until unofficially, but I was young, so they didn't bother me too much. The other guys had it worse. Now, if we're going to go over to somewhere else. I was, I was settled in Torvedas. Wait, 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 and, wait. You said something you didn't explain. You said they well, didn't bother you. Right no, you said that you didn't, there. You didn't bother you too much. There. What are you talking about? You can't. You say something, you I'm have to explain. Now, I doubt that should be mentioned Ash below or Shaz Island, though, and the Marshall Felder. Yes, they were in Torvadas. I had a shakas with them. I had a shakas with them because they had a shakas with Lubavitch. They weren't Lubavitch. Marshall Felder was the oldest one. Marshall Felder had already, he was, he was much ahead of me. And Shmuller was also much ahead of me. They were about three, four steps ahead of me because they learned in Torvadas and they, they, they learned properly. So they were even, even though the years was such a big thing, but the learning, they were way, way ahead of me because they learned in Torvadas the whole life. I mean, they were different. Yeah, years I know, I know that. But, so, but they had a shachis with Chabad. They had a shachis with Chabad, which I had the same shachis. Eventually, okay, I had to get into it, yeah. And, no, no, and no. The, the marshal, let me explain. I'll tell you what it was. You was going to have to come to that, yeah. It's not that I learned two years in Torvadas. I had no shachas with Chabad. I never saw that again. And then I came to Mount John. No, 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 no. It didn't work like that. Yeah. From right up from the first time when I came to 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 to, to Torvadas, yeah. Uh, 
first of all, there was a tiny shear, which you, could, they, you couldn't have it in the yeshiva building, which I didn't like that. I was a small kid. I didn't even understand. Why can't you have a tiny shear in the yeshiva? What is it? A, 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 something you're not allowed to open? That bar, I never said a word. I was only 14 years old. But that doesn't make sense. Then I heard that when wrote Tanya, wrote a Shulchan Aruch. I know you have to live according to the Shulchan Aruch. And he made a Shulchan Aruch. And it's there. You can buy it. And he want to say for Tanya, you know, if, if, he, if I bought it, I finally learned Tanya, they'll throw him out of the yeshiva. Does that make sense? Maybe to you, to it didn't. But I was 14 years old. So I shut up. I didn't say anything. Did I like it? No. When I found out there's a shear right around the corner, there's a little steeple. I don't know. They got the key for it. And Bochen came for 770. So I went also. Did I stand Tanya? Zero. Zero, I understood. But I went. Why? Number one, I don't know why. Number two, I didn't like the idea that you can't have it in yeshiva. I didn't like it, even though I didn't understand. I didn't say a word. And then I liked the Bochum. Not I liked the Bochum. I, I saw, a, I had, okay, good. I saw the Bochum in Montreal also. But here I had more, I saw it maybe closely. If you see a guy, a Bochum, let's say, I'm just mentioning names just like that. You see a guy like Geshem Elgarelik, um, Sean Bebeshevsky, Abraham uh, And you see Robert Shabachim. Boy, there was something into them. Then I, I was thinking, I'm, I have to realize I was 14 years old. I just came from Montreal. You have to realize my background. Leave alone Yiddish guy. We've, God, we've passed that already. But I saw there's something over there. Look at these guys, these American guys. Hmm. Look at that. So it had, in the background, had over there. And then I decided there's going to be a big Ferbengen. I'm going to the Ferbengen. Where was the Ferbengen? In the hall. In Eastern Parkway, Nostrad. What was the day you discussed it? I found out that the one of time you got out of jail. Okay. That's all. Uh, if I saw the Rebbe before, now I don't think I saw because I just came to Cheshven and saw the really warm man. I don't, we'll leave the, leave the Rebbe aside. So I went to the Ferbengen. And it's inspired me. The things I understood, very little, but there were things I understood. It, Yiddish is no problem. I was I was born with Yiddish. I, nobody taught me Yiddish. English and Yiddish by me were exactly the same thing since I was four or five years old. No difference, you know. So I understood I, I mean, language just on every word. I didn't stand, I was a kid, but had it that I wanted to see the Rebbe more. The next for in the hall is gonna be Yudshvat. Well, that's nearly two months away. Yeah, so it had affected me. So if the weather was good, and I knew the Shabbos of Bochim, the weather's going to forbring. So if the weather was good and I finished eating Shabbos, it was about 11.30, 12 o'clock, I finished eating, something like that, or maybe 12.30. And if the weather was good and I was in the mood, I say, you know what, I have nothing but to do now. 12.30, the Bible Shem is for banging. Then there was a sukkah. There was 770, it wasn't even built. But the weather was good. So I would walk to Crown Heights. And that's really, that's really when I, when I was there and I saw the Rebbe, I saw the way he's acting. I saw the way he was walking on the street. Crown Heights was full of Yid. There was more for me Yid from Nice in Winnesburg. There was more Steinbach in, in Winnesburg. But numbers, oh, God, nice to full of you. From me, nothing but enough from me. They had a lot of not from me also. Oh, from me, there was a lot, you know. And I, I saw the Satmar, Satmar never told me to Shabbos every Shabbos. That's, they're Bjorlish. He told me, I, I had to finish, I, I used to, I ate in the house. Today, he's a very famous rabbi. By the father-in-law, he the father-in-law did the live downstairs, a Jew from Vienna. And upstairs, there was a, he was after, he just got married, has some smoke, and his name is Moshe Wolfson. Today, he's a big, famous person, and Rabbi Dolphin will go into, uh, he probably made a big, big biography in him. But then he was young, and I had to go back to Yeshiva, so I had to get, it was on Climber Street, and the court, I had to get to Bedford, Bedford go down to Turbidas, 
and the corner of Bedford and Clymer, that's where the, uh, the Yid who lived over there, it was called the Satna Rebbe. Took it us up to Mother Lock when he came. So every time I went by and he would see me, I would say this four Shabbos a month, three out of four probably, something like that. And he would say good Shabbos to me. You know what I did? I answered him good Shabbos. Did he have a Shabbos on me? Zero. I saw him walking down the street, the whole bunch of people following him. I don't know. Didn't have no effect with him. I was a small kid, 14 years old, I'm just jumping around. The Rabbi Dafu wants to know what attracted me to the Rabbi. And a lot of Sikhs, a lot of Scottish, not Chassidus. Chassidus, I didn't know. You know, it was strange for me. I didn't even understand the words. We'll soon get to that too. I have a long letter from the Rebbe about that, you know, even though I was a small kid. And I see the Rebbe walking from his house. You know, I don't remember if it was in New York. I met, no, he moved in. I remember going to an apartment, the old apartment. He moved to, and he was walking on, on Eastern Parkway. You know, I'm jumping around at the time. It's that I saw him walking down Eastern Park when Eastern Park was full of Yidin. And I see somebody going with a black beard. He had a black beard with a few gray hairs. It was winter and it, it wasn't really cold. That should happen. He wore a coat, a light coat. It wasn't really cold. Winter didn't really start. You know, and I saw that his head is down. I see, I saw his lips are moving, but it's not just looking normally. And I see how he's walking so plain and how the sidewalk is opening up Lubavitcher Rebbe Gate, Lubavitcher Rebbe Gate. He looked like a, like a regular Jew. And it, it touched me. It touched me. They look at the town. Then I found out all, more and more things about the Rebbe. And I looked at it and everything. I, I saw Emmis. I didn't see this making a whole big timbus and timbus, you know. I, I, I don't know. I was a kid. I was attracted to him. So I went to Shio and Tanya, and I went to Fabregas during the two years. And eventually, I got the second year, I had a terrible rep in. I got into, I, got, I, I wasted a year there. And uh, I got already. Uh, not such a good taste from Torah Vedas to even though it was run properly. Now, I'll give you one example, okay? I went to the Fabangans. I get a kid, 14 years old, okay? I just turned my, my, my young lettuce to Simcha Taylor. Don't think I was 14, he's 14 and a half, yeah? Yes. I, I, when I left, when I left, I was right. I, I just turned 14. But my misfit is not a 57, it's 56, it's a simple custodian. But anyway, so I stood in the front until the end. And the next day, I didn't come to Shear. So my rabbi, who I knew was when he was young, he had a little trim beer, but he died with a guy who was a ghetto husband, and he called me over. And he calls me, says to me, Ni Meyer, what's not the Lubavitch Rebbe? I said, Baruch Hashem, what's not the Gera Rebbe? He says, Baruch Hashem. Then he gives me a whole talking, which I didn't like, but he gave me a nice talking. He gave me a nice talking. And he says to me that you have to sit and learn. To go to whatever is a big thing, but not in the Cheshbon for learning. I accepted him, the way he spoke to me, and everything, yeah, but I told him, I'm telling you right now, and I couldn't kill less if you're going to cancel me. But every now, and I, I, I don't know why I said it. Nothing was pushing me. I hear what you say, and I, I'm not going to argue with you. But you know, every now and then, besides the learning, you need a pep talk. And sometimes people take vitamins. What do you take vitamins for? Orange has vitamin C, and this has vitamin A, and this has vitamin B. So people take a little pep over there. What's the yabba if I go to the Baba Chirebbe? Now, what happened? I missed the share. So, what do you think? I'm going to become the Rukh Chirebbe going. I'm going to become Rabbi Chaim Brisker. I'm not going to become Rabbi Chirebbe going. He didn't have what to answer me. It ended with that. And I went again to Fabangan and I get dead and come and he just say something about it. Came the second year. Oh, and then I, the, the guys. Came the second year, now things changed. First of all, Marsha Feller went to learn in 770. Shmulu went to learn in Montreal. And Arshazanigold went also to learn in Montreal. 
And uh, I remember Frank Rose, well, Frank Roseman also went to learn in, 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 in Southern 70. I was certainly where I left alone. So I'll tell you a few things that pushed me like the final push. Uh, I came to Montreal for Hanukkah. <clears throat> we were, they gave us a few days off. So I said, I'll go home. So I got into my train. I came home. And I went to the Zal over there. Now, the whole time I had a shark of the Schollenberg Cove. The whole time. Every time he came to New York, he came to me, to us. And he would tell us, he would for Bangalore with us, and this and that. And I had, I, I had a shark with him. And then I came the second year, and then Shmulu was there. I, came, I became very close with, Shul, with the Shmulu that goes on till today. We always had a very, very, very close Shaitis. It didn't go away till today, even though so many years. And uh, more than with anybody else, Osha Zanigal, not so much. I've been once or twice in Minneapolis. But with Shmulu, it was different. And Shmul, I come into, into, into Montreal, and Shmulu's, and I, that year was the second year I had a horrible weather. I don't want to speak, it was horrible. Believe me, when I say it was horrible, I didn't learn anything. I couldn't stand it. He was an idiot. I couldn't stand nothing. The last time that he brushed, brushed his teeth was when he was in Shanghai. He probably didn't brush it there. He brushed it over there. We got close to him at the state. Talk about it. Anyway, and then he was, he, 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 I had a horrible year. The first year was okay. I liked it over there. Him, I, I wasted my time. So uh, Shmuel was just me. I don't understand you. You're wasting your time there. Come here. Look at the Spanish there's here. You're going to have this until with us. And I look around, I see Bochum. I said that there, there, there was Bochum over there. Ptakis Mohusim. Yeah. I remember one thing, and he came, he says, You know, you come next year. I think we're going to learn Gitting, he says. Well, I'm not sure. We come next year, we learn Chavrusu. And I was close with him. That pushed me. Yeah. Another thing that pushed me, there was Bochum that I knew is a big town with Chochem. Not that I was a big baby in Tabi Chochem. Later, when I came to learn in Shiva, so my Rosh Shiva, who was, I mean, he was a senior Rosh Shiva, a Chaikin, tells me those listeners, Yankel Shvei, he was a Bokher, a regular Bokher, he was an older Bokher. Yankel Shvei is Bokhi and Dala, Felki Shukhanor, Madala Naisikaina. The Yankel Shvei knows the whole, four, the whole Shukhanor with all the commentaries. <laughs> you won't find one dinosaur with us. I don't know if they know the whole kids of Shukhanor. Anyway. So Yankel Shvei calls me over. Besides Shmulu, I mean, because I was Hamish with him. To the extent when I came to learn, so there was two Boch, two young I, I wanted to go to eat in the Shiva and get up. As soon as Shabbos, I was born. So these two, um, every Shabbos, they knew should me. There was two, one guy, his name was Peter Korf, and one guy was Yankel Shvei. I have to go, I have to go eat by them. I didn't want to go eat by both of them. Even though, because I want them to knock it off, but I had to go eat by them. For a year, for two or three years, every Shabbos, I eat by them. I was mamish like, like he was like an older brother to me. So he's, that's when I was in the Shiva, but I'm going ahead of it. So Yankel Shvei calls me over, I'm learning to have a das, and he says to me, make it to learn So I said, no. He says, well, so what do you learn? He says, I learned Gemara, we learned this and this, Masech, which I don't remember, blah, blah, blah. So he says, I don't understand. If you're sitting, you're learning Gemara and you're learning Torah, hold it all along, and you're not learning nothing, that really explains you, you should understand and feel and really know what's haste Titus Hashem. What is the Abish's Tanya speaks Chokmasa is Bodach? This is the Abish Ki Chokmas, Ki Hi Chokmas, and Binasem, Laeni or Ami. This is a posting in Chumish. How do you know that this is Abish's Chokma? How do you understand that this is Abish's Chokma? How is it explained to Abish no Chokma? Who explains you the greatness of Titus? And I looked at him, like the Gavis, and I say, like the Gavis said, I don't know what to answer him. If you don't learn Chassidus, you're going to everything blindly. Chassidus opens up your eyes. Okay, so, okay, so continue. After that, what happened? But hold on. After wait. that, what happened? Wait, wait, okay, wait, the, wait, the, wait. The final thing what happened, I wasn't going to leave in the middle of the year. So the final I have over there, is I got in, I, I was really fed up and I decided I'm gonna leave and I had to do with the Manal of the Sifter. I don't want, but better if I don't mention names. The Manal of the Sifter 
had two black and white pictures of Gudolim from the ceiling to the floor. One of them was the Tzemel Tzedek, and one of them was the Rogan Shonen. And I knew that he had something to do with Lubavitch. Right? That's all. He was a son-in-law of Ivo Mendelovich, which Rabbi Dolphin does not have to be explained who he was. Uh, but later I found out that his brother had a bracha from the Rishab that his grandchildren, her grandchildren, who are going to America, are going to remain el Yeah, you mean, Rabbi, you mean Rabbi Nassanul Quinn? <clears throat> Donald right. Quinn. You mentioned the name. I don't want to mention the name. You mentioned the name. Okay. Nothing anyway, wrong. He, was a, he was a very fine so person. I, I had a run in with him. And that's when I told him that I'm quitting. And you're not going to see me again. I'm staying with it to the end of the year, which is very important for the end of the year. Anyway, I was very fed up. I understand. Let's go on. Up. I understand. I understand. Let's go on. Okay. Anyway, so he calls me in. This Quinn calls me in. I wasn't by, by learning. Why, it's the second, third time you worked by learning. I, 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 I was fed up and Baruch Hashem, David Shir blessed me and I'm not a Kofa Toiva, I have a big mouth. I said, Rabbi Quinn, what's bugging you? He said, what's bugging me? Bittle Toiva. I said, Bittle Toiva is bugging you? You're a hypocrite. I said, the, the, the Russia Shiva for the base medish, not the Sifta, the Russia Shiva for the base medish was sitting the whole time behind the Rebbe. And I guarantee you, and he says a Shir Barabi for one of the Shiorim in the base medish. He didn't come to say a Shir. Because Rebbe for being to 4 or 4.30. Till he got home was about 5.30. He included, he didn't come to say a Shir. He, uh, he's older than you. And he has more title than you. And he's the Russia Shiva since 1940. It's already close to 20 years that he's a Rosh Hashem here in Tovidas. Oh, you mean, you mean a better lift? You, that you, doesn't you bother you. Lift. What are you afraid? I'm going to leave you? Yeah, I'm going to leave you. Because I'm sick and tired. I have to answer that if I went Hanashom to a movie. Let me tell you, Rabbi Quinn. There's guys in the dormitory who are doing things which are not kosher. And you're doing nothing. You know why? Because they're not leaving you. And I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going to go something else. I'm going to go to the Bible Shara to see Shiva. <laughs> that's all. He looked at me, didn't know what hit him. And that's what I told him. That that's exactly what I did. Okay, exactly so now, stop, stop, stop. We're going to end now the second part of this unbelievable interview. And uh, we will continue very soon with the third part. Thank you. <laughs>